One of the things I have noticed about this daily ritual of journaling is this clarity. Something we call CEO sheet sheet. There is a structure represented by several steps that all of us entrepreneurs take during the business. It's like client engagement, then work execution, how we report the progress and communicate with the team and with the client, how we collect the payments, how we account these. We've got Zero and HubSpot talking to each other. Zero is our master in terms of our general ledger. Something that you would love to automate and probably delegate to your team. Oh, it's a good question. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to CEO Cheat Sheet Podcast. Today, I have another episode for you with amazing guest, John Hill, who represents company Ucidity as co-founder and HubSpot CRM expert. Um, we're going to follow our standard agenda, having some intro, understanding uh, what Ucidity business is, uh, what John Hill would look like, and then tap into the core, speaking of the tools, processes, and um, other tips and tricks uh, that might be useful for you. Uh, hi, John. It's um, I'm delighted to have you here on this call. How are you doing? Good, Vladimir. It's uh, great to be on here, and uh, I'm really excited about sharing some of my knowledge with uh, with your listeners as well. And um, thanks again for inviting me on board. Amazing. So uh, I'm kind of intrigued to hear like what uh, what your business is about in the first place. Um, and uh, how you started it. Yeah, absolutely. So look, our, our business in a nutshell. So we provide uh, CRM solutions for, for businesses. So typically what that looks like is uh, helping business owners understand their own marketing, uh, their sales. So in terms of like lead management um, and actual sales dashboards and forecasting as well. And then uh, automation tools so they can save oodles of time in their business. So that's, that's one of our core offerings is the CRM. Uh, and then the other side of that is um, uh, really intelligent marketing solutions. So branding and marketing solutions as well. And we've got an outbound sales component. So essentially we cover a lot of the spectrum, uh, but it's everything from helping a business um, bring in a perfect fit uh People, we call them like strangers to being someone who's an evangelist for your company that gets you more leads like your first customer. That's amazing. So technically, if if I just started a business or I started to think about the marketing department, I should probably take a look at the UCD team, uh, which might help me um, have a more organized approach and use your uh, vast, uh, vast knowledge about how to structure everything down to processes. And you cover, you said, both marketing and sales, right? So it's like integral yeah. solution. That's amazing. Um, cool. Uh, so another, another like extension of this question can be a little bit tricky. Uh, like why you started that, uh, how it started from like, um, from your point of view. Yeah. Look, uh, so my, my background was, uh, I, I come from a technical background. Um, so way back in the day I was a web developer. I started coding when I was 12 years old. And, um, uh, as I used to progress through my web career, one of my biggest challenges was handing over a website and essentially saying, see you later, good luck. Um, for me, I grew up uh, playing with a lot of Lego, so I love creating things, watching things grow, and um, my interest started to just naturally progress towards digital marketing as I was building websites. So I'd always have in the back of my mind how to build a website so it can enable a business and help a business grow. And that naturally grew into curiosity around, oh, how do we fill up these websites with with leads? And how do we, once they're a lead, how do we help the business manager lead? So I get a real kick out of uh, helping businesses grow. Um, and uh, so the formation of the, the of, of Ucidity uh, came from uh, myself and then my business partner, Bernard. So he comes from a creative um, and uh, branding graphic design background. And both of us had a marketing background. Uh, very long story short, we met at a BNI meeting, business networking meeting. I needed a, a, essentially a, a, a creative person. He needed a technical web person. And we just sat down and had a coffee and then we started doing business together. Wow, that's, how, nice. that's how we formed your city. <laughs> that's an amazing story. And I've seen, by the way, you have like two colors there. I, I remember from looking at your websites, like red and green, and like you, you kind of uh, take share of it, like both of you, right? Yeah. It's kind of. Yeah. And the funny, yeah, the funny thing is, uh, so my, I was traditionally the orange, um, inspired a little bit by HubSpot Orange, because we do a lot of HubSpot rollouts. 
and Bernard's was the uh, the green, and they both complemented each other really well. And then we've got a purple, which just just mashes them really well. And if you look at look at the short version of our logo, um, essentially we've got a U with like a couple of eyes yep. on top. Um, I always have a laugh because the orange one's a little bit higher, so that means I'm superior to Bernard. <laughs> um, but um, well, he designed it, so you know um, that's the way it is. Uh, but that's yeah, essentially it's like two people having a conversation and you know forming, growing a business. Oh, I, I love uh, hearing you know meaningful stories behind uh, the logo. I, I wish uh, some of uh, the businesses I run have the same, <laughs> but I can't can't boast that much. So this is amazing uh, how you mix uh, these uh, two talents you have together to give a meaning to the business. So what I understood, instead of just delivering this technical solution, you started to think like, what's next? How how it can be to, uh, put into a use and you know benefit pretty much every party. It's uh, something that as I as, as having engineering background, uh, usually neglected until I got into the business. So it's, it's amazing how you ended up having your own company uh, with, like, with this meaningful um, mission. So um, what's your uh, business goal in the end or like in the, in the near time and uh, how it aligns with your personal goals in the business? Yeah, look, so like the, the big goal for our business is to be able to um, have some sort of um, exit, where, whether that be that we are working with uh, a much larger organization to essentially plug in something like our, our agency as uh, capability for their business. Um, that's one strategy we look at. But um, big thing for me is that um, as part of looking at an exit is, um, you know, I, I uh, have two kids and a wife and um, my big thing for them is providing a future for, for them as well um, and having the business essentially complement our lifestyle and built in a way that um, one f- I think firstly inspires my my children I was brought up in a in a household where it was basically get a nine to five job um, work in the same job for 40 odd years get your retirement and then you know that's it um, and the world of business was very, very foreign to me and very scary when I first started business. Um, but, you know, to be able to open up a world for my, my, my children to say, look, here's, a, here's another op- opportunity for you um, and um, help them understand some of the, the joys and the challenges of running a business as well um, so that they, you know, they understand it's a roller coaster ride and they build up an environment that, where essentially we have flexible approaches to to life. Oh, that's amazing! I can I can say this is a noble um, goal, and uh, inspiring the creativity in your um, you know your children is amazing to me. Like kids, uh, like another kind of project. So I uh, think it's very wise strategy to have a perfect work life balance. I don't have kids right now just because I know that uh, it, it's kind of a top priority thing. I can't deprioritize because of the business. So <laughs> nice. Thanks. Thank you very much for sharing this. Um, and what do you love and hate the most in your business? So I'll start with the hate first because I like to end on a high. Um, I think, uh, you know, one, one of the, the dislikes around business is that, uh, you know, there are times where, especially as a, as a husband and a father, where I have to put in extra effort where my family needs me. That's, I find that really challenging. And, um, you know, I, uh, as a member of uh, Hub Networking, uh, we, we actually have a small group of dads in our, in our networking group where they actually sit down at a table and we talk about these, these challenges. So that's definitely a, a, a dislike. Um, sometimes, you know, we all, we all have it. There's customers, customer behaviors that we dislike. Um, and I think it's, it's, uh, it, it, it's an interesting balance because sometimes it's, it's us just sitting there just going, oh, I wish our customers would understand us better. But there's also, you know, I, I take responsibility in terms of it's also us educating them better. You know, a perfect example of that is building a website, um, a lot of customers we work with are like, oh, can't we just add this page here and move this over here and add that bit? You know, I've seen you do it before and it takes a couple of minutes um, without really, really understanding the impact of, you know, with, with everything we do, uh, of something simple generally has a lot more to it than just moving something around on a screen. Um, but, but switching to the loves, um, 
I, I would say the big one for me, tapping into my family again, is there's an element of flexibility. And someone I mentioned said at this uh, last week was that we get to choose our flexibility. So it's not like you just you have um, freedom and flexibility. Uh, you know, like I, I I can't work whenever I want. I have to put a certain number of hours in the business. But the hours that the hours in the day that I work, um, I have a choice around. So perfect example of that is that at least twice uh, twice a week I drop off my kid at school, uh, my son at school, and I pick him up at three o'clock. Um, if I had a nine to five job, there'd probably be a lot of negotiation, probably some politics because I leave early and all that sort of stuff that goes with it. Um, but I have a I have a choice around my own own freedom. Uh, the other big thing for me is that. Uh, I love about business is that it's, it's essentially a personal development um, course on steroids um, because you're always fa- facing your own challenges and, and finding ways to overcome your challenges. And, um, you know, I think just uh, the growth, personal growth from that is, is amazing and I can apply that to all areas of my life. So, you know, you can't avoid stuff as a business owner and uh, you just have to find ways to work through it. And as I said, like it just makes you a more resilient human, human being. That's interesting. Yeah, flexibility is, uh, I can relate, is one of the uh, luxury of what you can do, um, which is definitely hard to balance with the rest of responsibilities and challenges, but uh, something worth having for sure. And um, you mentioned the uh, negative side of the thing, but the customers that sometimes can be troublesome. I, I found them the best teachers, uh, even though they might be absolutely horrible people. I think, uh, or I, I always try to think like, well, I'm providing service, so I I just want to reflect everything for me. If I can handle them and let them make them happy, you know, th- the rest would be easy. <laughs> so, all right, that's cool. Um, so the the next item you already shared about your daily lifestyle. It seems like you are heavily um, uh, heavily involved into balancing uh, between the business and the family. So, uh, can you share some I don't know rituals or you know healthy habits? You can share with uh, with the viewers, listeners, um, about your CEO, uh, sorry, uh, co-founder daily lifestyle. Yeah, so a day for me, and this has only really just come back into practice quite recently, is journaling. Um, I started working with a, a coach recently. I like to have some sort of mentor or coach um, in my life as a business owner. Um and she was insistent, uh, if you're listening, Lexi, I'm, I'm doing it. Um, but she was insistent that every day I journal and I was a little bit resistant at the start. But um, one of the things I, I have noticed about this daily uh, ritual of, of journaling is, is just clarity, clarity around where I'm heading, clarity around uh, as, a pers- as, a, you know, as a human being, as a father, as a partner, um, but also as a business owner, you know, I'm responsible for sales in my business and it's like, Every day, I'm like, what more could I? What more could I journal about? Um, but generally, there's a there's a section around gratitude, um, and a section around you know just just venting on a piece of paper, and a section around clarity, uh, who who I am as a business owner, who I am as a father, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I find the more I'm doing this, the more I'm digging deeper and getting clearer on what is going on in my life. And the crazy thing that's happening is that. Uh, stuff that I write in my journal tends within 24 hours actually happens. Um, yeah. It's it's I think it's just a it's a I think it's a result of a lot of work that I've done on myself. Um, but you know, if I write tomorrow, I'm going to meet two new clients and or two new amazing opportunity sales opportunities, and um, they're going to want our services. It's like the next day I'm at a networking event and they just pop up. I'm like, oh crap, I should do this journaling more often. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. You can program it yourself to to success. Program myself, yeah, yeah, and it's you know there's a lot of there's a lot of theories and everything like that. You know, reticular ad- activation system and all that. But um, yeah, so definitely there's the uh, daily daily ritual of of journaling. Um, I like to have some form of uh, of of movement. Uh, sometimes that's literally just getting home and throwing my kids around on a bed. Um, you know, because they they're excited to see dad and they want to wrestle and sort of stuff. I. I generally don't exercise in the morning. I I love exercising in the morning, but for me, I just feel like I'm drained for the rest of the day. It's a bit of a weird thing. Um, and the other one is is watching my own energy. So as as business owners, uh, this you, you can't afford to have low energy. Uh, but there's there's times where if you can be 
present to your own energy, um, then and find out what what drops it and what increases it. It's like do more of the thing that increases it and do drop off the things that drop it. So as an example, like if I have, I sometimes go through periods when I'm just drinking like three to four cups of coffee a day and um, uh, there's times where I just feel like that just completely drains my energy. So I've just swapped that out for green tea. You know? Sure. So little things like that where it's just like, you know, being 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 on point essentially. And uh, like I said, just being really present to how you – uh, uh, yeah, how how you get through your day and um, and I progress. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. Uh, I mean, all, all of that, especially journaling. I, I started like when I was listening to you, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. How you can also do the retrospective. Just if you do this daily, you can also reflect on how you progress because you you also mentioned the future aspect. Like you, uh, <laughs> like I said, program yourself or just project what you're gonna achieve. And you can also compare it, like uh, whether, whether you get to this state or like analyze what's the problem. Um, that's, that, let me actually think about this. I should probably do this as well. And when it comes to uh, coaches, every time I hear about that, I probably should try something because uh, the, the only thing I did, uh, I was just reading some books and um, like this, this gratitude aspect is constantly revolving around. So this is something that makes you feel uh, more happier when when you um i would say display the great you do it especially to to the surrounding team or a close one that's that's interesting yeah uh i think that, like um the other one uh just that whole capability of just of, of essentially brain dumping um into a book uh you know it, it creates space for for new things uh, i think as business owners we can get a little bit caught in our heads especially during stressful times uh, and if we've got somewhere just to have all that stress, go on a piece of paper and say, see you later, um, that then creates space for other new amazing things to come on board as well. That's interesting that you have mentioned it's like mental setup on top of just doing this um, course of like journaling. Uh, it's, it's more like uh, in-depth thinking of what you're doing. Hmm. Very, very deep uh, thing. We're going <laughs> deep in these conversations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a big one. All right, cool. So at this point, I think we're done with the warming up and uh, we will proceed in the, something we call CEO sheet sheet. So basically there's a structure which is represented, represented by uh, several steps that uh, all of us entrepreneurs uh, take during the business. It's like client engagement. It's like we start the business, then the work execution, um, how we report the progress and communicate with the team and with the client. Um, how we collect the uh, payments, how we account this just for the sake of data transparency and accountability. And also um, whether autonomy is on this list because it's not for, for everyone is needed, but it's something that might help improve overall progress. So this is like structure points. And I think we can go either in any order from, from, the, from the first item to the last one or whatever the how conversation goes. But the absolute uh, beginning, and I think one of the most important uh, items in the list of any entrepreneur is uh, the client engagement. Like, can you share how, how the approach looks like in your city um, in these regards and what tools are you using? I bet HubSpot gonna be one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so absolutely. Um, uh, so uh, I'll say broadly CRM. Um, and that's primarily, I've, I've run, you know, when I was a solopreneur, I, I ran a business using spreadsheets for a little while. Um, I ran, ran it when I was trying to just remember what I had to do. That wasn't very effective, but, um, <laughs> uh, but the, 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 you know, having, going from that to a proper CRM system. So for us, it's HubSpot, um, helps us just keep on track of, uh, everything from uh, where where people are within our pipeline, you know, uh, potentials that we've never reached out to before, um, uh, those that we've had some sort of interaction with. I do a lot of networking, so categorizing our contacts in terms of like who's a who's a more of a referral partner, who's more of an opportunity, who's someone that um, you know we. We maybe we wouldn't do business with, you know, just for whatever reason, um, being able to categorize our our contacts and have that systematized in a way that, you know, if someone's more, uh, I guess, less qualified, 
we might put them into more of a nurture stream where someone is highly qualified. We have a a different system for keeping on top of our yeah. interactions with them. Um, I, I could talk about CRM for hours, but <laughs> but essentially the way we built it is that we uh, keep track of uh, everything from the meetings we go to, who we met, uh, and I say networking meetings, uh, who we met there, what opportunities came out of it, um, et cetera, just to look at uh, what is the effectiveness of what we're doing. Um, the other layer we look at is the... Uh, the layer in terms of uh, churn as well. So who have we not reached out for a, for a while to? So we've got a system just to remind us of those. Uh, you know, we're lucky HubSpot tells us when our prospects visit our, visit our website. So as an example, we, you know, we might have seen them at a networking event a couple of weeks ago and suddenly they're, they're looking around on, on our website some people say, uh, you know, CRMs are, quick, uh, are creepy, but um, I think everyone knows that there's some sort of system somewhere that's looking at the marketing layer. So yeah, it'll tell us when people are looking at our website and what pages they're looking at. Um, so that's the, yeah, that's the CRM system. Um, like I said, I could talk about that for hours, but um, that's the free high level what we do. Yeah, thank you. That is very, very detailed already, I think to understand for everyone who is starting to have a proper order for sales pipeline. And so uh, client engagement is it's, it's pretty interesting. I think many companies just neglect that and stay within like something like Google Analytics. And I'm just curious like whether HubSpot can completely replace it. As you mentioned, they collect the data, or, yeah. right? From the from the visitors of the website, like you can have the cohorts, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, so it's a, it's a great question. So HubSpot has its own inbuilt tracking and analytics tool. Uh, and it will give you uh, a fair bit of data, but not not everything. So as an example, Google Analytics will show things like, um, you know, uh, like the full flow of where people go through your website um, in, in more general terms. So you get to get a feel for like, hey, when people jump to our website, where do they go next? Whereas HubSpot will give you more of a um, a specific journey. Uh, it'll tell you which pages are popular, you know, where they came from, how they got there, et cetera. But Google, definitely Google Analytics will give you a lot, lot more detail and you can do a lot more with the the, the data as well. Um, but it has its own style of analytics. Like absolutely Google Analytics won't tell you, won't tell me if you came to our, our website, it'll just say, hey, we've got a visitor. Obviously for data privacy reasons. But um yeah, that's sort of a main difference. So we tend to use the both together. Mm, well, makes sense. And you can always compare the effectiveness too. Um, yeah, that's it's something I, um, that's pretty unexpected. I actually didn't know HubSpot can collect this information. But they also uh, I have to stay on this item a little bit more than I want because you're a HubSpot expert. And I think for everyone who listens and um, watching this podcast, it's going to be very interesting to, know, to learn some extra aspects. So one of the, um, another aspect would be like probably the cost, especially for starters. I know the HubSpot uh, can be pretty expensive if you have set of all in, but for these like essential tools, would you highlight what would be the best starting point for, for I don't know, uh, agencies looking into bring some order into into their business? Yeah, so look, there, there's a couple of really, really available entry points for HubSpot. So yes, they do have a, a, a free version, um, that's where I started my journey when I was really just deciding which CRM I wanted to work with. Um, so with the, with a the free version, you can have, uh, all your contacts in there. You can mark it up to, uh, I think it's a thousand from memory. Um, you can have a full sales pipeline, um, but it won't really do much of the marketing side. So as an example, if you've got a contact us form on your website built in HubSpot, it'll have a little, lo it'll have a logo there saying, Hey, built by HubSpot. So, uh, I would say it's definitely for the uh, sales pipeline management. It's it's fantastic from there, and even the free version. And then we have the what we call the starter version, and that can start for a single user, uh, twenty two dollars per per month. That's per user. So if you're a really small operation and you've got like two or three salespeople, you're you're spending like fifty sixty dollars a month. Um, for uh, it starts to open up. A little bit more so you can do 
some of the automations. Like uh, one of the things I love out of that is um, is meeting automation, especially for a salesperson. One of the biggest challenges around meetings is like, hey, are you available available at three o'clock on Monday? And the person's like, oh, no, I'm not. I'm available at four. And it's like, oh, hang on, I'm about. And it's like this email's bouncing back and forth. And uh, if you're a busy person, uh, you know, most of us just end up getting on the phone and if someone's fumbling around, like it wastes a lot of time. So HubSpot has this inbuilt um, capability. So some there, there are similar types uh, systems that you can pay for as well, but um, it has it all it all uh, integrate with your calendar. So I can essentially uh, email someone and say, hey, like here's a it'll have like a little table of the times that I'm available, and that takes me about. I don't know, 15 seconds to pull that table in and then it has a link to say, look, if these times don't work, click here and here's all the times I'm available. So something simple like that can be a real enabler for sales teams. Uh, we've got task management, so follow-up tasks. One of the worst things about uh, being a salesperson is trying to remember all the people you've got to follow up with, what you said you would follow up about, et cetera, et cetera. So you just have this nice, easy thing. You can have an app on your phone. You can use it from your desktop. So as you're walking out of the meeting, you just go on your phone and save it. And then you've got your your reminder of what you need to do for that person. So they're probably two big things um, that we find people use. And then there's obviously the dashboard as well. And the starter version of, of HubSpot has some pretty good starter marketing tools as well. Um, but then you lean into the professional version. We have full automation and marketing automation, nurturing, et cetera. Well, thank you very much for this detailed insight. I am also making notes for myself to hear because <laughs> like these follow-up things, if they are automatic, they might make total sense because this is the problem I constantly see. People forgetting doing the follow-ups or being too aggressive. There is no kind of uniform structure. Um, and when you when it comes to like actually um, closing the client, securing the deal, do you use like any core generation tools like, um, do, do you kind of have integration that, I don't know, maybe Sarah accounting tool when you, uh, let's say, agree to the client, so COV, I mean, uh, scope of work is agreed. Now the next step could be done uh, via like registering. Okay, this is the scope of work. Uh, this is where we start. Here's the invoice related to the scope of work. Do you use any tools uh, to, you know, automate this part? Yeah, absolutely. So look, um, in the, when we're building out a scope, um, we'll typically use some like a Google sheet, um, for something that's a, uh, a little bit more complex. Um, and then from there we'll have all the line items of each, each component we've got to deliver. Um, essentially we do a lot of our pricing is, um, uh, time-based. So we'll do an estimate of what it's going to take to deliver that specific uh, line item. And that gives us our price point per group of line items per se. Um, so typically, sometimes from there, we'll, we'll actually just send that to the client and say, look, here's an initial scope, um, have our, our meetings based on that. But once it gets to the point where it's moving into more of a quote, uh, we'll use the inbuilt HubSpot quoting feature. And I'll just explain that a little bit because we've got Zero and HubSpot talking to each other. So here, uh, Zero is our master in terms of our general ledger, uh, our products in HubSpot match our products in Zero. So as an example, if we're doing a some HubSpot consulting, uh, when we add that to a sales deal and a quote and an invoice, they all hit the same line item in the general ledger, That which means we can track um, sales you know, down to That's fairly granular, granular level. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, and then that then links up with uh, PandaDoc. So we're just moving from PandaDoc back to HubSpot as a digital signature tool. Um, but essentially, a lot of the, the work that we do once it's gone past that Google spreadsheet stage um, goes into HubSpot. And then we track everything from, we've got it automated. So you, you go to a particular stage, the automation takes care and creates a, a draft deal in zero, which then gets approved by the salesperson, gets sent to the client um, when they sign and pay and then moves to a like a close one stage and then kicks off our onboarding procedure that's nice i like this um full circle especially that you also wire up both hubspot and zero into quotes uh, slash invoice and I, I bet there is a follow-up tool for like invoice not being paid on time to remind the client 
Is is uh, is that also something that is included in in here, or you still have problem like ah, we gotta start a project like I don't know in the two days, but the invoice still not pay? Like, do do you have these kind of challenges? Yeah, so we uh, we have those conversations during our sales process to let them know essentially that generally it's a five day window, um, just so we can plan our resources correctly, uh, and. If it's if it's a a project that's fairly time sensitive, we'll generally be um, on the phone at least once at least once every two days, if not every day, uh, especially if it's like a very high priority project. Um, and then yeah, you know, essentially it's just guiding the per- the, the the person out there and just say, look, you know, if, if you want to kick off, then you know we have to have the documentation signed and the invoice paid. Um, and just having them very, very aware of, of how that process works. Um, and for, you know, other style projects, generally they sort of, I won't reuse the word drift, but they have their natural progression <laughs> through. That's nice. Yes. Well, thank you very much for sharing this part. I know this right now is a little bit tougher times in Australia, and I've, I've, I've heard from several uh, entrepreneurs that there is a challenge with chasing clients with payments. And it's, I think it's very important to use technology to help alleviate that and stay focused on, on what you're doing uh, instead of like maintaining this infrastructure. This is pretty cool. So HubSpot and Zero. Now, when it comes to work execution, when you naturally give it to the team, what tool do you use like to track the progress, you know, to, to then create a timesheets, maybe do some internal analysis? Yeah, so we, we use ClickUp. Uh, we have used um, a few different tasks, uh, a few different uh, platforms in the past. We used Teamwork originally um, and moved to ClickUp about two years ago. Uh, I guess part of the reason was it just gave us a bit more flexibility and it had a few more bells and whistles. Um, so that is where we do our project and task management and our time sheeting and a lot of our uh, scoping as well. So as an example, if we have a project meeting with a client, um, we'll have a special section which tracks um, ongoing WIPs. And then we've got essentially a, a, a small template we use that any major points from that meeting go into that WIP meeting and then it gets distributed throughout the task. So we're always keeping uh, a track of uh, what meetings we've had, what was discussed, um, et cetera. Um, another layer to that is we're starting to use Google Meet a lot more, which is similar to Microsoft Teams where you can have the transcribing capability as well and just have that recording layer. So if there's ever a query or we were unsure about something or whatever it might be, there's, there's a way to um, keep on top of that as well. Um, and then in, for our internal comms, we use um, Slack so um, HubSpot and ClickUp will integrate with Slack as well, and they all sort of talk with each other. So basically, uh, I, I guess the Slack becomes uh, ultimate uh, attention um, concentrator, I would call it. So because like you probably have some um, notifications, it works real time. People have apps like push notifications come in here and there. Um, and uh, then then they can react. That's, that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm curious, like what's what the most, uh, what's the favorite feature you have in ClickUp um, when it comes to this uh, work execution part? Maybe it's timesheets. Like, what, what, do, what do you personally love the most from this tool? Uh, look, I would say um, it gives us a really, uh, really easy way to segment all of our, our projects that are, are running at the moment. So, as an example, we've grouped all of our internal work into a section of ClickUp and then we've got all the client work in, a, in another section. So if I'm focusing on a particular client, uh, it means that I can then jump into that that specific area. Um, and then once we're in that area, we've set it up in a way that we've got all of the columns we need for a task. So everything from, I'll just run through because I've got in front of me, uh, but like there's, there's priority, the date that the that particular <laughs> task was originally due versus when say, you know, we all know tasks move out for various reasons. So we can actually look at that and go, it was due on the 1st of of August. The new due date is 1st of September. And we can do a little bit of analysis saying, look, how often do these things move? So we get a bit of a feel for our projects as well. Um, When the task starts, when it's due, who's ultimately uh, looking after it and who's actually, who's assigned it. So I can actually be the ultimate 
owner of that task, but I could task people in my team to do the doing and then, but I've got ultimate responsibility per se. Uh, then we've got like how much time has been tracked already versus what was originally estimated, um, status, and then like a comments field. So you just have comments in there, sort of ongoing comments as well. So I, I really like the fact that we've got everything in front of me. Sort of um, integrity. I got it. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I got it. So hierarchy, integrity at some level, because they have time tracking, you have uh, ability to segregate uh, different aspects of work uh, using like uh, clients and other differentiators. And um, I, I have a, a, just a small question, just based on your answer. You mentioned you also using comments in, in ClickUp, but you also have a Slack. Does it create some challenge to a team to, to understand what the, I, I mean, or, or they just know that Task related stuff we discuss in comments, everything else in Slack. Yeah, it's a really good point. And um, I think one of the challenges with most organizations is when everyone's got a whole set of tools, um, then there, there has to be a strategy to management uh, to manage it. As an example, like even, even with our organization, we try to keep things lean, but we've got people on WhatsApp, people on Facebook, people on Instagram, we've got emails, we've got text messages, you know, the list goes on. Um, so it's about putting boundaries around where, what goes where and exactly what you said. So if it's more general stuff, like I'm just texting my team going, hey guys, where's this thing at? That's a Slack message. Um, if it's um, something like a client approved a design, uh, we'll change the status to approved, but the comments will have something like approved during uh, WIT meeting on you know 26th of July by Fred. So at least there's, it's specific to that task. And if someone needs to go back later, it's sort of a trail of, of conversation specific to that task, like, you know, client. Like noting. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Hmm. Got it. Well, that's cool. Um, I think, uh, yeah, this is, this is going to be interesting for others to also delve into that. As I, as I hear, hear, like, you know, also when it comes to communication with the client, if if you're inviting them to some tools so they can see the progress and I'm tapping into reporting and communication uh, into the second part of it, like um, do you guys also communicate inside the click up with the client? Like do, they, do you show like, hey, here's our progress. This is the task we finished, you know, you can check the comments um, and uh, like do, do you communicate with the client there or just like a Slack and, and some manual uh, reporting? Yeah, from the, for the most part, we look at the end of the day, we always open up uh, click up so that uh, our clients have full full visibility on the progress of a project. Um, I will say that at least eighty percent of them never look at click up, um, just because you know for them it's another system they got to use. And we've got generally we've got weekly or fortnightly WIP meetings anyway. Um, but the uh, the capabilities there, uh, there are some clients that will actively uh, for those that are more of a uh, an ongoing retainer and they've been through us since sort of day dot. Um, they have full access to our ClickUp or at their section of our ClickUp. So they will add tasks and um, uh, they will add comments, they'll change statuses, they'll do the whole lot because they sort of just been through the journey with us. Um, so that works quite well. Uh, it cuts down a lot of admin, especially with when there's lots going on with those clients. So you can imagine if there's emails flying everywhere and someone's replying, you know, it just gets super messy. Um, whereas just having it in one simple system works really well uh but yeah you're right the other layer that we have is is um at least a um a, a weekly update of where a project is and we have a broad rule that if someone's starting on a big component of a project we just let them know at the start of the week hey we're kicking off this part of the project on wednesday just so they have clarity of of what's going on as well because there's nothing worse than uh, we've all been there um on the receiving end of this like you pay your money and then it's just like uh, hello, do you still exist? <laughs> you know what's going on? Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah. So, so you welcome transparency and uh, clients to check the click up. I can tell you that from my experience, we used the SANA back in those days. And anytime we invite clients to a SANA, one, uh, they always have the same feeling. And one of them even explicitly told, told me, like, hey, Volo, why do you torture me? Because the way it looks, you know, a whole amount of tasks, it's, it's really hard for them to understand what's going on. And it's, it's, it's very also open to interpret by, by the provider, uh, which I, I started to realize is not so, super honest. Like, 
um, do I expect the client to read through all of that? So probably manual sync up, um, maybe with the, with the lack of any other tool that would make it more meaningful for client would be the best way. So they feel comfy and uh, feeling the progress in the way you, you agreed, you know, in the beginning. That's cool. Yeah, we're actually, um, it's a, it's a really valid point because we set up our ClickUps. So we've got like a summary table of what's going on the project. Because at the end of the day, they just want to know where are things at. They don't need to know the ins and outs of the intricacies of every, especially building a website. There's a lot of, lot, a lot, a lot of intricate moving parts. They just need to know, is the homepage done? Is the contact us page done? You know, that's all they need to know. So we actually built a summary table layer uh, on top of, our tasks so that they can just focus on the bits that are important to them at a high level right like yeah. so they th like hey look if you want to go under the hood you can go and explore the whole new world <laughs> but you can also get all of the necessary information from this view that's cool it's a pretty uh, smart move i think uh, and and also inviting them to try as long as they don't need to search something just look at the view get the information and get out that's cool um when it comes to reporting inside inside the company, this is this is another point I just had from my experience, uh, and, and I'm really curious to know how do you handle this aspect. Like, how uh, do you track integrally, like using all these tools, the profitability and the budget usage with each, with each client? You know, because sometimes it can be important. Some clients can you know stop in the beginning or just bring a lot of change requests as we started. on like, hey, can we add this page? And you know, it just ruined the whole timeline. You can't uh, you know respect the deadline anymore because there is extra work coming, or you can you need to uh, provide some extra invoice or something comes inside the team. So, do you track this information internally? Yeah. So uh, look, very broad. Broadly, we have, uh, and this is, a, a, I will say, outwardly, it's a it's a weakness of ClickUp. It doesn't have a financial layer. Um, to me, uh, just a side note, it makes no sense why they don't have it because every, you know, if you're running a project, you need to keep on track of the financials. But so ClickUp, if you're listening, then, you know, get your act together. <laughs> um, but uh, we, we track a lot of the uh, PM side, the financial side of the PM uh, manually, uh, and essentially we can pull the reports in terms of uh, how much was originally budgeted, and we can pull out how much time has been spent overall on the project. So for us, it's a relatively straightforward formula to say, look, you know, here's where the budget's at, high level. Um, but you're right. Then uh, it's also a bit of a manual process in terms of. Um, uh, you know, other other elements, you know, um, uh, variations and whatnot, that's a little bit more of a, a manual process. Um, you know, I come from an agency where we used to work with government all the time and they would they would always have at least 10 to 20% additional budget uh, for a project. And we, ha we, you know, we knew that was there though, and they knew it was there and we just had, had to have a system to manage that. Sure. Um, so I've brought some of that into our processes where we've got a formal... Uh, process for it all but you're right then it's got to feed back into the original budget and and whatnot as well so and especially if we're you know there's, there's components where we use external contractors so um that is yeah it's manual at the moment mm -hmm. um, from that side of the business got it well um yeah it's it's interesting how they don't have it having so much money and uh tools i mean invested in tools build but uh, yeah, luckily for the projects, uh, as I run a lot of the business is trying to compete with them. So uh, <laughs> that's good for us for now. But you're right. It's like they have so many tools, but they don't have something that I would call essential. And by the way, um, one of the main triggers why we started our own tool is because when we use Asana, they pretty much have the same thing as ClickUp, but they don't have time. They didn't have time tracking. By that time, oh, I don't know if yeah. they have this now. So we use HubStuff, uh, time tracker. And we use it in integration. And integration was kind of loosey. And people people doing mistakes, you know, all the time, like human factor, because it's a two systems. And it was really hard to pull up really good timesheets. And now some very simple question, which I think every entrepreneur should keep in mind until they, you know, hire someone to take care of it, like general manager, whatever. But in the beginning, they should really understand what their actual real net income, like what their like net margin probably for the agency to simply answer the question how profitable they are, like how, how good they are doing, like how the expenses structure. So uh, anytime I've seen it, uh, all of these systems, they focus on project management, but the very essential thing is like to 
you know, have this qualitative and quantitative metrics in one place. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Uh, well, of course, I, I'm sorry that you hear, hear challenges, but I'm glad to hear that we are probably uh, doing the right thing. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, anyway, it seems like still ClickUp is one of the king on the project management. Just a side note, I mean, they, they are doing an amazing job. One of the companies that I've seen who actually care about some user feedback and build a lot of functionality we really need. Um, just coming from Jira and other tools, I don't know what's going on right now, but it was so hard to use in the past. And uh, the reporting was also challenging. Now, when it comes to invoice and payments, I think we kind of covered it, and I believe uh, this is this is answering, um, this. What, what answers this question is um, Zero and HubSpot, and I think Zero is another cool tool, especially for new entrepreneurs. It's kind of educative. At some point, you probably don't have much background how to run the entire business, and you have these tools that actually guiding you and offering you the, me the method. And um, the, the last uh, aspect of it, as I can see here, is which is not covered, is autonomy. Like um, how how uh, autonomous your business operations are with all this tool suite. I mean, I noted while while you sharing that you still have some manual work such as, well, having this high level financial reporting aspects, but uh, is there anything else that is something that, that you would love to automate and probably delegate to your team? Oh, it's a good question. Um, I think uh, something that uh, is a bit of a shortfall, I would say from the HubSpot perspective is um, the, 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 it's probably not quite the topic of automation, it's more reporting, but being able to um, consolidate more channels into into HubSpot. So as an example, like if you want to track, say, um, your YouTube, you've got to have the enterprise version of, of HubSpot. And, um, you know, for me, that frustrates. It's like, I just want to track all of my marketing and have like a, a nice PDF that spits, that spits out that we can track that. So, um, look, I would say uh, firstly, like because we, we do integrations, I think we're lucky enough that we have – either built in integration ourselves or found something that does the the work for us um because that i guess we're more te technology minded technologically minded um so yeah i to, to short answer to that i th uh, i think we've covered a lot of what we need in, in terms of automation because i feel like um if we went to automated um you know We've had discussions internally around automation of, say, when someone becomes a lead, you know, like um, the, I mentioned before that we've got uh, nurture sequences they go into if we don't think they're going to really convert anyway. Um, but there's a fine line between having emails that are flung to you every every week that people know they're an automated email versus something that is actually meaningful. So, but, hmm. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. And especially with AI striking in, it becomes even more challenging. Um, I don't know what you do with LinkedIn. I have so many messages and they are obviously run by these, you know, bots or AI. <laughs> it's not real. And I'm I'm just I'm just ignoring it. I think everyone does this right now. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh like what what do you do? Like, do you ignore them until you start to realize, okay, this is now a real person because he pissed not you, you don't answer, you know, or something like that. Yeah, we I'm lucky enough that our uh we've got our admin team. Um so they're they're essentially VAs in, in the Philippines. They have access to our our LinkedIn and uh I've instructed them to say like if they're of certain characteristics, then um uh, just to uh yeah, ignore them or actually, you know, um don't even answer their requests. Uh, and, you know, they'll let me know if uh, a legitimate one has come through and I haven't answered for about 24 hours. They'll let me know as well. So that's that's how we handle that. And something, I'll, I'll tell you with something else we've automated. So one of the biggest challenges we see with our clients and, and a lot of clients is uh, you put a contact us form on your website and suddenly they're just like inundated with spam. A big, big challenge. And we've, we've talked to clients where they're just like, they don't even look at their contact us anymore because they're just like 99 cent spam and and i'm like what happens if a legitimate um, request comes through and they're like we wouldn't even know so um one of the things we set up with our system is that 
if it comes from, say, a free email address or particular you know, parts of the world where they tend to have more spam than others, then uh, uh, then it gets vetted uh, by our VA team. And occasionally we'll have someone from a, you know, from a Gmail who's just starting a new company and they'll be like, hey, you know, I need your help. So uh, we let those ones through. But uh, pretty much all of our spam gets vetted and it's, it's automated as well. And we've got another thing on our contact us form that says, why are you getting in contact with us? So do you want web services? Do you want CRM? Do you want marketing, et cetera? And we've got another tick box that says, you know, you want to collaborate with us. If they tick, you want to collaborate with us, it automatically goes into our vetting. <laughs> uh, it's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I love it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because it was just wasting time. It's like, you know, we'd start pursuing it and then it's like, oh, hang on, this is spam. So we've got to be protective of our time. I, I can't reflect it so hard because like probably 95% of emails we are getting from, from the forms, uh, from the contact us, it's going not from the leads, but rather someone who tries to sell. Yep. It, it doesn't really even matter if this is like someone looking for a job, they're still selling something. And you're, you're one of, you want to sell. It, it, it's just illogical. For selling, uh, for, I don't know, for careers, you can have a separate page. Like why, why would you do this cold selling? I really like it. And I think we should have something like that too, because I like this button, <laughs> because anytime it's collaborate, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe a more sane person would think like, hmm, they want to they wanna sell their product. If I click this, I'm probably not doing what I should do. Maybe I should enrich in a different channel. So it's very, very smart uh, strategy. Um, the only thing we did, by the way, which might, might, might be helpful, we changed completely the approach with contact form. We removed them completely. We have this leaf chart and we have it integrated in the work layer. So it automatically creates tasks, create push notification, like it notifies salesperson with every arsenal of tools they have because we started to measure uh, if, the, if, the, if the answer fast to, the, to someone who is, of course, qualified as a lead, the success rate at the answer, at, at the, having any minimum dialogue is like day and night, you know? It's before that, even if it's like one hour delay, it's email. And I think people just naturally do not often sit with the in inbox opened. But once they type something and imagine like person answers you in the one minute or like almost instantly, like, wow, are they sitting in there for their sales team? And it's like, I don't know if, if, if I think HubSpot has leave, uh, leave support kind of widget. So I'm curious if it's going to be taken over because this, this manual interaction seems to be more valid, especially with all, with all this noise. Yeah. So we've got our setup. So it'll send, yeah, email, Slack, um, SMS. Um, um, there is one other as well, but yeah, yes, yeah, I'm exactly the same. It's like if, if something comes through, you got to, you got to get onto it pretty quickly because um, you know, people people shop around. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's pretty amazing uh, set of tips and tricks you have. I, I have an open question here. Uh, like, do you have any other tips and tricks you would uh, suggest for other agency owners, maybe also marketing agencies that is not covered uh, from what we have discussed so far? Yeah, look, uh, one of the things that we went – when I started getting into the realm of, of CRM, I'm going to harp on about CRM, um, is that it, it helped us as an agency to, you know, to manage our, our, our business. Um, the, the next layer of that is then being able to, from our learnings, be then able to impart that onto our clients as well. So no longer are we just a, you know, essentially a marketing agency. We're like, you know, even when we're implementing CRM, sometimes it's the first time you get sales and, and marketing in the same room. And, um, you know, just being able to, and, and, and operations as well, and being able to get them to understand each other in terms of, you know, what, what, uh, what automation procedures should you have? Um, what's, what's a qualified lead versus unqualified lead? You know, all those conversations in the same room um, are really uh, you know, for, for, for some businesses, they've never had those conversations. Um, and if you are a marketing agency and you are able to provide those types of services to your clients, that's a huge value add in terms uh, on top of just being, I won't say just, but on top of being able to provide your, your marketing services. Um, so there you go. If you are discounting CRM, 
um, rethink it. That's my tip. That's amazing. So I like how much uh, wisdom there is in these words because every time I see marketing, it's about something that many people can't comprehend. So you sell a solution influenced by your experience kind of framework, right? Uh, it, it reflected in the CRM as a tool, uh, reflected with the with probably other tools that works in, in conjunction just to uh, solve one big problem of acquiring more customers and empowering the sales pipeline and you know overall marketing activities. It's not just about uh, you know focusing on marketing itself, which might not which might be really well disconnected from from the goals. That's my by the way problem. I, I'm kind of new guy in the marketing space, and anytime I see any ads or advertisement, I'm like, all right, cool, that's all great, but whether it's gonna give me some results, how can I measure that? And having the proper system in place is it's kind of like seems so logical. It's fundamental. You gotta build first, then based on that you can set up goals and start to really track it. So if if I completely understand you, that might be like a really great starting point or like uh any point for uh agency to review their operations and answer the questions, are we happy with that? And I think um with all with all your experience, that might be just leveling up the game. That's awesome. Early, yep. <laughs> all right. So that's that's been pretty insightful. I appreciate your time. And uh, just to invite, I have another question. Last one. Uh, and like, what do you have on? Um, like, is there something that is not listed on your LinkedIn page that you would love to share with the uh, other entrepreneurial community? Well, it's gonna. Uh, there's a. There's a a weird one. So um, uh, it's 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 more of a personal one. Uh, um, you know that question you get where you you introduce yourself and people always say, "What's one thing that um, people would not know about you?" I found out recently that my um, ancestors from about three or four genera, or probably about four or five generations ago, were the first people to have triplets in Australia. Wow, so that's definitely on my LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, that's powerful. <laughs> yes. So not necessarily a business tip, but a uh, bit of bit of fact. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing this. Yeah, I I think many people just love to hear something extra, so they they more like creating sort of I don't know bonds with the personality they are taking advice from, and they think it's it's really amazing. Well, thank you very much for your time today, John. Um, it's um, amazing to have you and sharing all of your wisdom and experience. And um, yeah, I I hope one day. Um, yeah, I will also try this framework. We have so much thing to do, but I'm really inspired with what you have shared so far. And just for every other viewer, um, so they can find you, can you share like what's the best contact uh, to contact Ucidity? Just the website or something yeah, else? Yeah, absolutely. So if you go to Ucidity, so uh, essentially the Ucidity is spelled like lucidity, um, but just get rid of the L at the start. Um, we've got a cheesy um, line around that one. We dropped the L so we can focus on you. So uh, ucidity, ucidity.com.au <laughs> is a great starting point. We've got blogs, we've got resources, we've got all sorts of stuff on there and uh, hopefully you'll find what you need there. Amazing. Well, thanks again and um, I see you um, later and have a great productive weekend. Thanks for having me. Thanks very much for having me on. 